Our next speaker is Madhu Ramesh, whose title is How to Cells Assemble the Ribosome Nanomachines. What's perhaps the most important and the most abundant machine on the face of the planet? I would argue it's the ribosome shown here. It reads and interprets your genetic code in your cells. Why most important? Because every living cell, from bacteria, yeast, to humans, the biggest living cells present, every living cell absolutely requires this machine to survive. Why most abundant? Because every living cell in your body has about 4 million of these. And you have 37 trillion cells. So count that up, I can. <laughs> so obviously these are very important to cells. So cells are going to invest a lot of resources and energy into building these cells and building them well. And in fact, right now your body is spending so much energy and your brain cells are spending so much energy into making these ribosomes that actually you're listening to me with much less energy. So we understand very little actually about how cells actually build these machines at the molecular level. And that's where my lab's research comes in. So what do we know? Where does the field stand right now? We know that the raw material to make these machines is RNA. What's RNA? We all know DNA. RNA is exactly like DNA in that it carries genetic information. It is made up of a sequence of four letters, but it differs from DNA in that it can form these more complex sort of structures, more intricate structures. What else do we know? Although this looks like a giant ball of spaghetti right here, I can tell you the precise structure of this machine is necessary for the cells to live. So with this background information, I ask the following questions. What enables this transition from this sequence to this intricate structure? What factors control this transition? So to answer this, what I did was I, I deliberately introduced mutations or spelling errors in this sequence. So because of this, I assay using the state-of-the-art technology right now that's available to see if this precise structure can form, if this machine can actually assemble, and if the cells can actually live. So what did I find when I introduced these spelling errors? I found that the precise structure cannot be formed and the, the machine cannot assemble properly and function properly and that the cells ultimately die. So why is this interesting? I think this is a striking case of self-assembly where the information to build this machine is encoded in the raw material of the machine itself. So when I interfered with this message, what, I, what happened was the message was lost and so the cells couldn't build this machine properly and the cells ultimately died. Don't you wish your IKEA tables came with such elegant self-assembly schemes? Thank you.